Why does Bitcoin have its market bubbles? Here's a hint. Scarcity has nothing to do with it, even if many people think that is the case. In fact, we have data proving that issuance has no impact on the bubbles. The article about that can be found in the description. This video will be exploring the nature of Bitcoin's bubbles and is a follow-up to our Bitcoin Power Law Theory video, and the link to that can be found in the description as well. Are Bitcoin's market cycle bubbles good for Bitcoin? Many people would say no, and critics even go so far as to say that the bubbles prove that it is not a serious asset. This could not be further from the truth, as we will be proving in this video. First, let's begin with Moore's Law, which is a heuristic observation claiming that computing power doubles roughly every two years. The difficulty adjustment mechanism of Bitcoin guarantees that you need to spend a lot of money and energy to mine extra coins as time goes on. However, Moore's Law without a supplementary curbing mechanism would also give miners an unfair advantage. In four years, miners would have four times the hashing power at pretty much the same energy cost as the machine of four years ago. Miners would need to replace their machines anyway because of wear and tear, and the cost of the machines is just part of the operational expenses. It turns out both logically and empirically that we have price or rewards in general being proportional to the hash rate to the power of one half. Therefore, four times the hash rate would only give miners double the benefits. But then the halvings cut that benefit in half to leave them with zero increased benefits. It is not about punishing miners. Instead, it is all about keeping the miners on the edge of profitability and never allowing a free lunch to ensure the stability of the system. This system is too perfect to be due to chance, and we think Satoshi planned exactly for this outcome. The four years, instead of two, or a continuous decrease in rewards, is there because it is also a good idea in terms of logistics, given that it takes time for the chip industry to upgrade, and it also gives time to the miners to plan for the upgrade and have their equipment depreciate naturally. It is pure genius, extremely pragmatic, and to the point with anything that has to do with Bitcoin. The miners also get a temporary pay raise during the bubbles, which helps them pay for new equipment for the next halving. This is because the hash rate is not able to keep up with the price increase during the mania phase of the bull market, so each individual miner temporarily makes a higher profit. Also, this is the phase of the cycle when smart long-term investors begin to take profits so they can buy more Bitcoin back at lower prices. The bubbles themselves are a consequence of the security attracting more adoption part of the Bitcoin Power Law loop in our Bitcoin Power Law Theory video. Again, the link can be found in the description. It makes sense because directly increasing security brings in more people and gives them confidence about the ability of Bitcoin to store value. Without this, there is no value. A good analogy would be when people move to a growing city when a burst of activity happens. People want to move in because of bridges, houses, roads, and so on. We don't necessarily think about these things directly, and are instead simply attracted to the activity. That is where all the new and good things are happening. This excitement creates a temporary fear of missing out effects, which is good because it is based on fundamentals, not some irrational speculation akin to the tulip mania. As Michael Saylor says, Bitcoin is a shining city in the digital world. As we can see, during a bubble, the price begins to go up fast, almost exponentially. It is the only time when the price does that, instead of growing as a power law. The update in the form of the halving happens first, and then the miners follow. Also, we can now see high amounts of anticipation due to the sharp increase in long-term holders who are abbreviated as LTH in this chart. At some point, the price action overshoots because of all the excitement, but then it needs to go back down. In fact, as you can see from this chart, the price decline is almost symmetrical to the price incline, and sometimes even faster. The bubble bursts, and the price goes back to the equilibrium. You could even say that it is a form of punctuated equilibrium, necessary for Bitcoin's growth. In evolutionary biology, Punctuated equilibrium is a theory that proposes that once a species appears in the fossil record, the population will become stable, showing little evolutionary change for most of its geological history. 
This state of little or no morphological change is called stasis. Similarly, Bitcoin stays close to the power law trend in a state of stasis for long periods of time. However, when significant evolutionary change occurs in an animal species, the theory proposes that it is generally restricted to rare and geologically rapid events of branching speciation called cladogenesis. You could even jokingly say that Bitcoin experiences a similar phenomena of branching in the form of copycat altcoins and forks when altcoin rallies coincide with Bitcoin's bubbles. In Tobias Huber's and Didier Cernet's paper titled Boom, Bust and Bitcoin, the authors talk about how Bitcoin bubbles are innovation accelerators. Also, according to the paper, Bitcoin's bubble fueled technological adoption cycles can be conceptualized as a pattern of nested curves that each represent a new cohort of hodlers. These subsequent waves of new hodlers, which represent future speculators who are not willing to sell in the next crash, can be quantified with a Bitcoin native accounting structure called an UTXO, short for Unspent Transaction Output. UTXOs, which are timestamped by the transaction or block in which they were created, represent when a Bitcoin was last used in a transaction. We can identify different adoption waves since Bitcoin's release, which occur when a cohort of new speculators or investors buy Bitcoins during a bubble and hold through the downturn into the next market cycle. These speculative adoption waves are represented by different age bands, whereas warmer colored age bands represent transactions of large amounts of Bitcoin, the steady growth of the top, cooler colored age bands indicate the adoption of Bitcoin, that is, they represent an increase in the hodling. In conclusion, long periods of stasis in Bitcoin's price action are interrupted by intermittent bursts of activity. A lot of innovation in the form of new startups and upgrades to the Bitcoin network happen during these bursts of activity. Also, these are the periods when most people learn about Bitcoin and become new hodlers. Therefore, the bubbles are also a part of Bitcoin's story. Even though the overall power law growth of Bitcoin is the main story, the bubbles are also an important and necessary part of it as well. These two components perfectly explain both the growth during and outside of the bubbles, each of them making up roughly two years of the full four-year cycle. Overall, the meme of Bitcoin having three green yearly candles, followed by a red one, is quite true. We should be happy that unlike the various songs telling stories about going one step forward and two or even three steps back, Bitcoin does the exact opposite of this, because otherwise it would not get too far like that. This is Saverio speaking, and as always, thanks for watching.